the robots are coming. Well, actually, they're already here. But before we panic, maybe we should ask ourselves, do they come with a manual? In this episode of Beyond the Box, we're unpacking automation and robotics in the world of logistics. We sat down with three experts at the Web Summit in Lisbon to find out more about the importance of this new technology and how we can use it for good. This is Beyond the Box, integrated logistics from the inside out. Hi, and welcome to this special episode of Beyond the Box. My name is Sam Bold, and I'm currently here in Lisbon, together with 70,000 tech types at one of Europe's largest tech conferences. Hopefully, the listeners can get a feel of the energy here with all the background noise. In front of me are three experts on robotics and automation. We have Alex Dugel, who is the Director of Automation Engineering at Maersk. Chacha Chacha Bell, who is Head of Research and Development for the Maersk Innovation Center in the US. And finally, Pedrick Kramer, who is CEO and co-founder of Fernride, a German-based startup that specializes in self-driving trucks for terminals and warehouses. So Chacha, the Maersk Innovation Center is a place where you're working with startups and also other industry leaders to create automation proof of concepts. So I'm sure you can explain to us all why automation and robotics matter in the world of logistics and why is this something we should be paying attention to? You know, robots are not just fancy technology. They play a much bigger role in supply chain. With robotic automation, they could be a game changer to increase the supply chain resiliency. And what we mean is robotic automation creates what we call predictability of the supply chain. That means predictability in the output. We know exactly what the output of uh, the process would be. The process are more streamlined. So we are able to adjust the supply chain towards this, whatever it is, uh, change or stress in supply chain much better. It also allow us to use automation to optimize the resources that we have so we could do more and be able to sustain the operation under the stressful situation or whatever stress supply chain causes. We talk a lot about digital transformation or visibility of the supply chain. Using automation, we are able to create real-time data for decision-making in a stressful type, but also starting to do predictive analysis of what could happen if certain things or certain input change in supply chain. Could you give us an example of some of the projects that you're working on right now? Definitely. We work a lot with both the startup and the technology providers in various types of uh, robotics automation. They could be warehouse robotic for different user application. For example, a robotic arm that is unloading freights from the container and onto our uh, citation system. It could also be goods to person robot. We have also a spider robot that transport carton from a rack. We also do semi-automation, remotely operated forklift where we allow people to work from the comfort of their home or from the office using a remote control uh, of forklift inside the warehouses. Different kind of autonomous vehicles swell on the yard, on the road, and many more interesting projects. And Alex, you're working with scaling automation and robotic solutions across Maersk's warehousing sites. Maybe to simplify things, you could say the Chacha and her team are working on creating proof of concepts, which you can then choose to scale across so many sites. Could you give us some insight into what aspects of Maersk's operations are at the forefront of robotic and automation integration? Scaling automation is part of our industry transformation process and a key enabler of operational and safety improvements. At Maersk, we have a modular automation approach that gives us the opportunity to break down the complex operational processes in well-defined operational interfaces, physical operational areas where we can deploy robotic solution. And is there specific areas where we have a lot of room for improvement? Specific areas like uh, where, where we expose our frontline colleagues to uh, high-risk operations, working at heights, walking in uh, high-intensity operation areas or carrying uh, heavy cargo loads. And Henrik, I'm sure you're faced with some of the same challenges and possibilities that Alex is describing now. So knowing that you're a leading expert on autonomous electric trucking, we'd love to know more both about Fernride, what challenges does it solve and how is it being used today? 
So what we are believing in is that we can make our supply chains future-proof. We can transform the trucking industry, what is really the backbone of global trade, from today's manual and diesel operations towards autonomous and electric. And why we do this is there are not enough truck drivers. In Europe alone, we have 4,000 truck drivers short, and at the same time, we need to look at the decarbonization of trucking. Truckers are responsible for 39% of the greenhouse gas emissions in transportation. So there is no other way than electrify those. And we now combine both technologies, electrification and autonomous towards trucks and do this in a step-by-step -step approach. So start where we can create, like Alex said, business value today. And this is uh, on yards, so for example, on ports, on big industrial sites, and then scale from those easy applications to more challenging environments in a step-by-step -step approach. So I think it's also important that we address some of the concerns, maybe even fears that people have when we talk about robotics. Not thinking sci-fi, robots gone rogue, but there is genuine concern and uncertainty sometimes around robotics and automation when it comes to jobs. But Chacha, when you look at new innovations, what are some of the considerations you make about the nature of people and robots working together? You know, people tend to forget that robots are machines and machines are tools for people to use. When we do a proof of concept on automation, there's pretty much two aspects where we consider using robotic automation. And first is what we call complementary. How do we use robot as a tool for our employee to do more? And I'll give you an example. For uh, a task to do inventory inspection or inventory control in a warehouse. In a manual environment previously, we have to send our people to go around the warehouse. Many times they go at height because our rankings are high up, up to the ceiling and they have to uh, inspect inventory manually, counting them manual. Right now we're using drones or autonomous mobile robots that is doing this data collection. So our same team of employees could then start working with the data, actually fixing the error instead of time to do data collection. This is how we give robot as tool. The second way that we are considering using automation is to fill in jobs where it's difficult to find labor. By nature, these jobs are the job that are physically demanding for the body, lifting heavy boxes, twisting, unload boxes, uh, do all of the high uh, injury risk type of job. So then we consider using automation so our employee could be working for jobs that are more suitable for them in the warehouse. So Hedrick, the logistics industry operates on thin margins and faces fluctuations in cargo, volumes, geopolitics, other factors. How can technology interface with humans to address some of those challenges? Our most important part of the mission is bring the benefits of automation and electrification to the industry now. And next to focusing on use cases that work now, uh, we also have the technology approach that works now. And this is where humans and robots collaborate hand in hand. So we believe in a human-machine collaboration approach. And how this comes then into, into practice is that we take state-of-the-art autonomous driving technology, but don't use it for full autonomy, so we, we don't pursue the stream of full autonomy, but let's say 80-90% of the routes can be handled autonomously for, for driving from A to B on a port, for example, but then there are certain maneuvers that are hard to handle for a robot yet. And those kind of tasks are being um, done by the truck drivers that are not working from the cabin anymore, but are working from their office location. So, um, what Chacha described as remote operators is also something that we apply now for trucking. And by combining now the human intelligence and the artificial intelligence, we can solve the, the challenges already today and bring automation into value now. Safety and sustainability are both core values for FanRide. So how can utilizing robotics and automation actually help to reduce a company's carbon footprint, but also promote better work safety? Yeah, so there, there are many dimensions to, to unpack. So by applying this human-machine collaboration approach, because it's human-assisted autonomy, we can put workers out of dangerous zones. So the truck drivers are not between all the metal on the container yard where also accidents happen. So next to having a higher productivity that one truck driver can handle multiple trucks, we also create better jobs and, and tap into a larger talent pool and improve the working conditions for the current truck drivers. 
And when you now combine electrification and automation in a joint solution, you can even subsidize the application of electrification uh, from the savings you generate through higher productivity on the automation part. <laughs> So Chacha, you focus on partnering with startups and established robotics companies to create pilots and proof of concepts. Can you explain why MERS takes this approach? Yes, we do notice that in today's world, advancement on robotics and AI and automation technology is advancing very rapidly. And the way that we would shorten the learning curve for the organization and really quickly evaluate if something, some new technology can be used within the company to create more value for the customer is through this proof of concept. So it's a rather agile approach to how we, you know, evaluate and onboard new innovation into the company. It is also a limited risk approach towards evaluating new technology, because if you think about it, before you spend time and effort and money planning and buying, let's say 50 robots and deploy them in, I don't know, 100 sites, why not do a proof of concept a rather short period of time to learn what could be the potential challenge when implementing this type of solution and really truly understand both the visibility and the value of the technology before going ahead and scale them out. And Alex, as someone involved in scaling these automation robotics solutions across our warehousing sites at Mouse, how does Mouse partner with both customers and our frontline workers to create business value? Scaling automation is a cross-functional effort. People have to work with people. Nobody can do this alone. We partner with our product organization to better understand our customer needs, with our frontline colleagues who have a deep understanding of our operational processes and how to improve them. And only then, our automation engineers, our tech teams, together with innovation partners and robotic suppliers can design, deploy, and support automation solutions which respond to real operational challenges. Only together, we can deliver value to our customers. So for me, partnership is the new leadership model to successfully transform and integrate logistics. Now we should look ahead at the future of robotics. So I'd like to have the opinions of all three of you here actually and how you see the future of robotics and automation. Starting with you, Henry. I believe that the future of our supply chains and the future of robotics is very bright when we can combine the strengths of humans and artificial intelligence in a hybrid approach and thereby achieving automation way faster than just relying on artificial intelligence only. Short and sweet. And Chacha, how do you see the future of robotics and automation? I think robotic would be an integral part of everyday life, not just at work, but also people would start seeing more robots at home or every place that they go. I think what's interesting to look ahead also, you would see same robot being able to do multiple tasks. That's the kind of trend that we see. And one day we might be able to give robot commands verbally and they would be able to understand and react. So very exciting time ahead. Very exciting time. And Alex, from your perspective, how does the future look? Technology leads logistic transformation and automation and robotics creates a unique opportunity to integrate digital and physical assets for an improved visibility over the logistic processes and to improve our ability to support our customer supply chain. Robotics in AI are here to stay. These are tools we need to use. So it is on us to learn how to better use these tools in support of our operations, our frontline colleagues and our customers. So before we go into system overload, I think we should end it here on both a promising and optimistic future for both people and robots. Thank you to our guests and to everyone listening. To quote a famous robot, I'll be back, or at least the podcast will. So don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode.